A Marian apparition is a supernatural appearance by the Blessed Virgin Mary. The figure is often named after the town where it is reported, or on the sobriquet given to Mary on the occasion of the apparition. They have been interpreted in religious terms as theophanies. Marian apparitions sometimes are reported to recur at the same site over an extended period of time. In the majority of Marian apparitions only one person or a few people report having witnessed the apparition. Exceptions to this include Zaytun, Fatima and Asiat where thousands claim to have seen her over a period of time. Apparitions and Appearances the term appearance has been used in different apparitions within a wide range of contexts and experiences, and its use has been different with respect to Marian apparitions and visions of Jesus Christ. In some apparitions such as Our Lady of Lourdes an actual vision is reported, resembling that of a person being present. In these cases the viewers report experiences that resemble the visual and verbal interaction with a person present at the site. In most cases, there are no clear indications as to the auditory nature of the experience, i.e., whether the viewers heard the voices via airwaves or an interior or subjective sense of communication. The 1973 messages of Our Lady of Akita were to Sister Agnes Katsuko Sazagama who went deaf before 1973 and remained deaf until 1982 when she was cured during Sunday Mass as foretold in her messages. In some apparitions an image is reported absent any verbal interaction. An example is the reported apparitions at Our Lady of Asiat in which many people reported a bright image atop a building. Photographs at times suggest the silhouette of a statue of the Virgin Mary but the images are subject to varying interpretations, and critics suggest that they may just be due to various visual effects. However, such image-like appearances are hardly ever reported for visions of Jesus and Mary. In most cases these involve some form of reported communication, and apparitions should be distinguished from interior locutions in which no visual contact is claimed. Interior locutions consist of inner voices. Interior locutions are generally not classified as apparitions. Physical contact is hardly ever reported as part of Marian apparitions. In rare cases a physical artifact is reported in apparitions, such as the image of Our Lady of Guadeloupe, which is reported to have been miraculously imprinted on the cloak of St. Juan Diego. Catholic Belief According to the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church, the era of public revelation ended with the death of the last living apostle. A Marian apparition, if deemed genuine by church authority, is treated as private revelation that may emphasize some facet of the received public revelation for a specific purpose, but it can never add anything new to the deposit of faith. The Church may pronounce an apparition as worthy of belief, but belief is never required by divine faith. The Holy See has officially confirmed the apparitions at Guadeloupe, saint etienne le laus Paris, La Salette, Lourdes, Fatima, Pont-Main, Beau-Rying, and Banner. According to Father Salvatore M. Perella of the Marianan Pontifical Institute in Rome, of the 295 reported apparitions studied by the Holy See through the centuries only 12 have been approved the latest being the May 2008 approval of the 17th and 18th century apparitions of Our Lady of Laos. Other apparitions continue to be approved at the local level, e.g., the December 2010 local approval of the 19th century apparitions of Our Lady of Good Help, the first recognized apparition in the United States. An authentic apparition is believed not to be a subjective experience, but a real and objective intervention of divine power. The purpose of such apparitions is to recall and emphasize some aspect of the Christian message. The Church states that cures and other miraculous events are not the purpose of Marian apparitions, but exist primarily to validate and draw attention to the message. Apparitions of Mary are held as evidence of her continuing active presence in the life of the Church. 
through which she cares for the brethren of her son who still journey on earth. Possibly the best known apparition cites a lured some Fatima, over 60 spontaneous healings. Out of thousands reported at the Lourdes Spring, have been classified as inexplicable by the physicians of the Lourdes Bureau, a medical center set up by the church in association with local medical institutes to assess possible miracles. The Three Secrets of Fatima received a great deal of attention in the Catholic and secular press. Criteria for evaluating apparitions In 1978 the Sacred Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith issued norms of the Congregation for proceeding in judging alleged apparitions and revelations containing the following provisions. The bishop may refrain from looking into it if he chooses, especially if he thinks that not much will come of the event. The National Conference of Bishops may intervene if the local diocesan bishop refers it to him or if the event becomes important nationally or at least in more than one diocese. The Apostolic See can also intervene at the request of the local bishop himself, at the request of a group of the faithful, or on its own initiative. The steps of the investigation are mandated as follows. An initial evaluation of the facts of the alleged event, based on both positive and negative criteria. Positive criteria moral certainty or at least great probability as to the existence of a private revelation at the end of a serious investigation into the case. Evaluation of the personal qualities of the person in question. Evaluation of the content of the revelations themselves. The revelation results in healthy devotion and spiritual fruits in people's lives. Negative criteria glaring errors in regard to the facts. Doctrinal errors attributed to God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, or to the Holy Spirit in how they appear. Any pursuit of financial gain in relation to the alleged event. Gravely immoral acts committed by the person or those associated with the person at the time of the event psychological disorders or tendencies on the part of the person or persons associated. After this initial investigation, if the occurrence meets the criteria, positive and negative, an initial cautionary permission can be granted that states, for the moment, there is nothing opposed to it. This permits public participation in the devotion in regard to the alleged apparition. Ultimately, a final judgment and determination needs to be given, giving or withholding approval of the event. Local diocese approval if the local bishop authorizes devotion inspired by an apparition to proceed based on an initial assessment. That permission does not constitute formal approval, which recognizes an event as being supernatural in origin. Such approval may follow years or even centuries later. A recent example of such a delay is the case of Our Lady of Laos, in which devotion was approved by the local diocese in 1665, but obtained formal recognition as a supernatural event only in 2008. Moreover, Marian apparitions often involve complications at the local diocese, and a letter of approval or disapproval from a local bishop does not automatically signal approval or denial. A recent example is the apparitions of Our Lady of Kibaho in the 1980s in Kibaho, Rwanda. In 1982 the teenagers who saw the visions reported truly gruesome sights and said that the Virgin Mary asked everyone to pray to prevent a terrible war. Some today regard the visions as an ominous foreshadowing of the Rwandan genocide of 1994, and particularly in that specific location in 1995, where some teenagers died a decade after their vision. The apparitions were accepted by the local bishop, but have not been given final approval by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. Apparitions and statues Marian apparitions are sometimes reported along with weeping statues of the Virgin Mary. However, to date only one single example of a combined weeping statue and apparition has been approved by the Vatican and the rest have usually been dismissed as hoaxes. Impact of apparitions while Marian apparitions may at times seem like fanciful tales even to devout Catholics. 
Factual analysis indicates that the effect of apparitions on the Roman Catholic Church has been significant. Marian apparitions have led to, or affected, the Catholic Church, Roman Catholic Mariology and the lives of millions of Roman Catholics in several ways. The conversion of millions of people to Roman Catholicism. The construction of some of the largest Roman Catholic Marian churches ever the formation of the largest Marian movements and societies ever, the spread of Marian devotions to millions of people, the declaration of specific Marian dogmas and doctrines, hundreds of millions of Marian pilgrimages. A few cases can illustrate these items. Conversions and shrines by all accounts, when Juan Diego, age 57, reported the apparition of Our Lady of Guadalupe on Tepeyac Hill in Mexico in 1531. He did not receive a lot of attention in Rome, since the Church was busy with the challenges of the Protestant Reformation of 1521 to 1579 and perhaps very few cardinals in Rome had ever heard the details of Mexico and its environs. Yet, just as a large number of people were leaving the Catholic Church in Europe as a result of the Reformation, Our Lady of Guadalupe was instrumental in adding almost 8 million people to the ranks of Catholics in the Americas between 1532 and 1538. The number of Catholics in South America has grown significantly over the centuries. Eventually with tens of millions of followers, Juan Diego had an effect on Mariology in the Americas and beyond, and was eventually declared venerable in 1987. Juan Diego was declared a saint in 2002. Furthermore, the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe on Tepeyac Hill in Mexico is now the third largest Catholic church in the world, after St. Peter's Basilica in Rome and the Basilica of the National Shrine of Our Lady of Aparecida in Brazil. Recent reported apparitions such as Medjugorje have also attracted a large following. Societies and devotions The Marian apparition of Our Lady of Fatima on a remote mountain top to three young Portuguese children in 1917 also seemed fanciful and the local administrator initially jailed the children and threatened that he would boil them one by one in a pot of oil. However, over the years the effect of Fatima has been undeniable. With over 25 million registered Catholic members, the Blue Army of Our Lady of Fatima is the largest Marian society in the world, and the message of Fatima has inspired the spread of other devotions. An example is Our Lady's Rosary Makers formed by Brother Sylvan Mattingly in 1949 with $25 to distribute free rosaries. Based on his devotion to Fatima, Our Lady's Rosary Makers has since distributed hundreds of millions of free rosaries to Catholic missions worldwide. Pilgrimages Marian apparitions are also responsible for tens of millions of Marian pilgrimages per year. About 5 million pilgrims visit Lourdes every year and within France only Paris has more hotels than Lourdes. And about 10 million pilgrims visit Our Lady of Guadeloupe each year, where each mass can accommodate up to 40,000 people. Thus each decade, just Lourdes and Guadeloupe amount to over 100 million Catholic pilgrimages, based on Marian apparitions to two people on two remote hilltops. The Sanctuary of Our Lady of Fatima also attracts a large number of Roman Catholics, and every year pilgrims fill the country road that leads to the shrine with crowds that approach 1 million on May 13 and October 13. The significant dates of Fatima apparitions. Overall, about 4 million pilgrims visit the Basilica every year. In Canada, millions of Americans and Canadians have visited the National Shrine of Our Lady of the Cape, in Cap de la Madeleine, Quebec, where the first pilgrimages began in 1888. Historical Feasts a number of feasts based on historical traditions involving apparitions are celebrated in the Roman Catholic Church. These apparitions do not technically fall in the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith Approved category, since they generally predate the formation of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith in 1542. 
they are recognized based on the papal declaration of the feast day rather than formal analysis by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. Our Lady of the Pillar in the year A.D. 39. According to tradition, the Virgin Mary appeared to St. James the Great, in Tharagotha, Spain. The vision is now called Our Lady of the Pillar and is the only reported Marian apparition before her assumption. The Basilica of Our Lady of the Pillar was built in Tharagotha, Spain and a key piece of Roman Catholic Marian art. The statue of Our Lady of the Pillar refers to this apparition. Our Lady of the Snow Our Lady of the Snow is based on a legend that during the pontificate of Pope Liberius, during the night of August V, snow fell on the summit of the Escaline Hill in Rome. Based on a vision that night, a basilica was built in honor of Our Lady, on the spot that had been covered with snow. The church built there is now the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore, and the feast was celebrated at that church for centuries on August 5 each year. However, there was no mention of this alleged miracle in historical records until a few hundred years later not even by Pope Sixtus III in his dedicatory inscription, and it may be that the legend has no historical basis. However, in the 14th century the feast was extended to all the churches of Rome and finally it was made a universal feast by Pope Pius V, Our Lady of Walsingham. According to the tradition of Our Lady of Walsingham, the Virgin Mary appeared in a vision to Richeldish de Faverches a devout Saxon noblewoman, in 1061 in Walsingham, England, instructing her to construct a shrine resembling the place of the Annunciation. The shrine passed into the care of the canons regular sometime between 1146 and 1174. Late in 1538, King Henry VIII's soldiers sacked the priory at Walsingham, killed two monks and destroyed the shrine. In 1897 Pope Leo XIII re-established the restored 14th-century Slipper Chapel as a Roman Catholic shrine. The Holy House had been rebuilt of the Catholic Church of the Annunciation at Kings Lynn. Today there are two shrines at Walsingham. The Roman Catholic shrine centered on the Slipper Chapel and the Holy House maintained by the Church of England. There are also two separate feast days. September 24 in the Roman Catholic Church and October 15 in the Anglican Communion. Our Lady of the Rosary The apparition of Our Lady of the Rosary is by tradition attributed to Saint Dominic in 1208 in the Church of Proil, in France. According to the attribution, the Virgin Mary appeared to Saint Dominic and introduced him to the Rosary. Some sources suggest that Alan de Rupi was the major influence on the rosary in the 15th century, while other sources seek a middle ground to these two views. For centuries, Dominicans became instrumental in spreading the rosary and emphasizing the Catholic belief in the power of the rosary. In 1571 Pope Pius V instituted Our Lady of Victory as an annual feast to commemorate the victory of Lepanto, the victory being attributed to Our Lady. In 1969, Pope Paul VI changed the name of the feast to Our Lady of the Rosary. The earliest reference to the tradition of his Marian apparition, dating from the late 14th century, states that Saint Simon was an Englishman, a man of great holiness and devotion, who always in his prayers asked the Virgin to favor his order with some singular privilege. The Virgin appeared to him holding the brown scapula in her hand saying, This is for you and yours a privilege, the one who dies in it will be saved. A scapula is an apron-like garment that forms part of the Carmelite religious habit. And in the original context the Blessed Virgin Mary's promise was an assurance that religious who persevered in their vocation would be saved. Beginning in the latter half of the 16th century the small devotional scapula became very popular as a sacramental. The historicity of St. Simon Stock's vision is disputed, and as a result today neither the liturgy for the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, nor that of St. Simon Stock make any reference to the vision of Mary or the scapula. 
The brown scapula itself remains warmly approved and recommended by the Catholic Church. Various devotional sources quote an interview with Lucia Santos in which she speaks about the brown scapula, saying, Our Lady wants all to wear the scapula, especially when praying the rosary, because the rosary and scapula are inseparable.